I finally found it. This is the 364 BHL Keystone Cougar. I have a Keystone Cougar and I can't let my wife see this floor plan because we're gonna buy it. Like this makes so much sense. If you have kids or if you are traveling with your parents, you're retired, your parents are older, you don't wanna leave them behind. They have a place to hang out, rest, amazing. And on top of that, they have a bathroom out back. And if you wanna take the grandkids with your parents, check this out. You have a loft, like this is well thought out. Or if you have older kids, and they want to sleep down here and the younger kids want to sleep up there, bingo. Or if you have a boy and a girl, you don't want to sleep together. I am okay with that too. Whatever scenario you have, this is your answer. So let's go ahead and start out here. So obviously they give you this bathroom, number one, because it's convenient. But number two, if the slides are closed in this area, you would not be able to access this bathroom. So they give you a door entry on this side and right there for of course your bedroom and the bath now if this slide is in you probably can still use this area it looks like you still have a little bit of walking space right there but back to this room so let's walk up the loft you've already seen this bathroom real quickly they give you a under counter sink medicine cabinet pretty big and a place to hang some towels whatever and really good thought out ladder i think anyone can climb up this thing and this has a max capacity of 800 pounds this is what i'm talking about right here this is thinking outside the box they do provide some connections for a television for charging looks like some usbs are up there too or you can just use that area for storage as well but this bed does have storage below it let's see what it looks like this storage is actually open to the outside as well. So you can use stuff for inside of here and for the outside. So I would just put a bend or a divider to kind of keep stuff from getting mixed up, but really cool that they do that. And as I mentioned, if you do have older people traveling with you, they provide a wardrobe out back too. So they can hang their stuff up inside of here. Really good attention to detail. And in each, um, opening you do have some drawers at the bottom here pretty deep and power plugs USBs and some more storage down below so if you're walking out of the bunk slash bedroom you basically will be walking back into your entertaining area in your kitchen so they do provide a door right there However, we're gonna keep this open to get a little bit more light coming in here. But if you wanna sit down at your couch, there it is. And they do provide a large television, large fireplace, radio, just really well thought out. And look at the interior design. I really think Keystone came out swinging. They were a little bit late to the party, a little bit, but they wound up coming. Now, the next RV I have, it will have a residential size and style refrigerator. I do not like gas electric anymore. They are terrible. Uh, this is what you want right here. This is huge. The whole family can come and you can have cookout after cookout after cookout and you will have enough space for inside of here. Lots of space and the Center Island here, it's huge. They give you some power plugs right there. And you do have the divider with the sink. I'm not a huge fan of that, but hey, it works. And under the sink, a lot of space. You can put a large, tall uh, trash can in there. They do provide a three burner cooktop. It's pretty much the same one I have in my RV. And small ovens, same thing I have. And some storage below. And did I show you guys this? Maybe I didn't. High point, it's the same one I have in my RV as well. And it's very reliable, we use it all the time. But check out all the storage, very usable storage. Open stuff for like your 
um, spices. And then here's your booth. And they do provide a power plug right there. So here is where I really get jealous. This is what I want in our RV, an actual pantry. And they give you a huge one. So let's open both doors. They do provide lights, or a light right here. I don't see any more. But it's not too tall, it's not too deep. It's just right. The only thing is I wish they would just put maybe just small dividers to kind of keep things in place maybe. Or it could even be like a little taller too because things are gonna, you know, flap left and right when you go down the road. You do have your power breaker inside of here. And if you do stay more stationary, you can put stuff up there for decorating. But yeah, this is really, really nice. Big windows. So you definitely want to find those views for your camping. And this does have the Coleman Mock AC units, there's two. And you notice that it doesn't have a dump. So they do provide actual home style uh, filters for these. And all the air comes out of these. So I would like to test one out. I wish I could have brought my generator and tested out the AC unit. Now one thing I like about this RV is that you have two entries from the master to get to the bathroom. So if you are like me, I like to sleep with no clothes on. And because of that, if my kids are hanging out in the kitchen, I don't always have to grab a towel. I could just keep my door closed and just walk around to the bathroom. Well, I guess you have to make sure, <laughs> you have to make sure you keep this closed, right? But yeah, the kids have their own bathroom, so they don't have to come back here. But I love that they give you a pocket door that really does come in handy, especially like with your hallway. But this is pretty big, I would say. Again, something new that they've been doing is they've been giving you under counter sinks. You just push the water in, really like that. And porcelain toilets, nothing new there. This is gonna be a, a two piece shower. And one thing I would recommend if you are full time or if you're just RVing, you have to check these uh, screws and make sure they're nice and tight because mine came undone and broke my door and it all shattered. And yeah, this would be really expensive to replace if you had to. I didn't replace mine, I just put a shower curtain up because I have a different design. But overall, I do like this. This is decent. Um, this is pretty big in here. I would say that it's smaller than what I have, but it works, especially this is a camper, so you're not trying to be too comfortable, right? But really do like this RV. I like how they laid everything out. Your wardrobe is on a slide for the bedroom. I do like the way the bed is turned. And here's that windshield. You'll see that when we go outside. I feel like that should be power. And you have storage on both sides. You have USBs and power plugs, both sides. And the wardrobe is actually really big. Check this out. Then they give you some drawers down below. They give you two actually. And they're really deep too. However, you can't put a bunch of stuff in here because you will break them. This does have that windshield up front that you saw on the inside. This does have a road armor through Lippert and it's gonna have a pivoting head. Now, below here, they do give you your spare tire inside of here. I would like to see them relocate this on the outside. Dual battery setup, you do have electric front jacks. And here's some lights for the front cap as well. It powers this light and your LED lights. Now off to the side, you do have a small awning, which is actually a good thing. And it looks like it's black on the opposite side of it too, which I love the third two over time. 
You have two propane tanks, 30 pounds each. And I do like the way this door is designed. This is a little bit shorter, which is probably gonna really eat up on your outside space. You do have a power right here with some TV connections and you have a light. They also provide power on the outside. Solid front step, outside speaker. And this is gonna be a cable driven slide. As I mentioned in the last Keystone video I did, I haven't had any problems with mine so far. Uh, this does have the road armor for the suspension. Trailer King tires are pretty decent. I've, I'm on my second set and I haven't had any issues. I may do a video on that. Now these are gonna be a 16 inch wheel. And they're wrapped in the ST23580-16. And then here's the capacity. It's gonna be 3,520 pounds at 80 PSI. And then they give you aluminum steps out back. And let's see, this might be the outside shower, I believe. Yep, outside shower. And then you have a second awning on the back here. Now let's check out this. I didn't see what this was. Oh nice, so they give you a outside refrigerator, which is really nice. I wish I had this on my RV. If you plan on full timing, get an RV with outside refrigerator. It's, it's the best thing ever. And, okay, I won't open my mouth. I won't say anything bad about this terrible grill. I will just keep my mouth shut. Alrighty? And let's go ahead and go out back. So this has an accessory style hitch. Some of the Keystone Cougars have an actual hitch that you can tow with, but this is just for an accessory, like for like a rack or for a bike rack, something like that. Your 50 amp power plug is out back. And as I mentioned, in that second bedroom, you do have some storage. It's connected to the inside, but still nice to have, because as you saw, you were down on storage up front. Large windows, and you do have a prep for a backup camera. And all the lights out back are gonna be LED. This is where you're gonna fill your fresh water tank here. And then sewer hose storage. And that's where you're gonna dump your fresh water tank at. Mine's actually in the same spot. And one thing you could do to take weight off the front I do travel with mine full, so that's 80 gallons of water, so that's going to take a little bit of weight off the front. Now, you do have two areas where you're going to have to dump from, so just keep that in mind. You have one here, and then there's one on the other side of these tires here. This is going to be a rack and pinion slide. And that area where you have to dump is under the slide, so before you pull the slide out, you would have to connect it because you'd be crawling on all fours to get hooked up. So just keep that in mind. Back of your furnace, water heater. I believe this is gonna be six gallons. I'm surprised they're still putting six gallons on here. You see right there, it says six gallons, tank cap. So here's the other side of the basement area. As I mentioned, it's not wide at all. But here's your valves for the black and gray tank. You do have valves in the back as well. You have your tank flush and city water connection. I didn't show you guys where the flush was for the rear bathroom. And I wonder if they connect them both here. Actually, you know what? I think these are both black tank flushes here. At least it says tank flush. I don't know what this is. I'm assuming it's for the same thing though. And then there's your inverter. And all your solar. And you do have a four point auto leveling system on this rig as well. And they do add lights on both sides. I don't have a light on my uh, driver's side of mine. So this is an upgrade for me. I actually added some aftermarket. So you definitely need them on both sides. Now let's look at the numbers on this particular rig. This is going to have an unloaded yoke weight of 11,310 pounds. Gross fuel weight rating is going to be 14,000 pounds. So 
you take this number and subtract it from this number, it'll give you your cargo carrying capacity of 2,630 pounds. And then your axles, which are Dexter, 6,000 a piece. I asked my wife a little while ago if she could do full-time RVing for another two to three years. And I was asking that question because I was wondering if we could potentially upgrade to a newer fifth wheel with two beds like this one. And I wanted to see if this GMC would fit if we did decide to upgrade. So let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers. I'm on Keystone's website and I wanted to point out on the floor plan, there is no washer and dryer prep in this RV. Um, that's not a big deal for us, but if you are planning on adding that in a fifth wheel, that could increase your pin weight. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because I want to show you guys the numbers for this particular RV. So the hitch weight is showing dry at 2,200 pounds. What I normally do is I take this number and divide it into the shipping weight. And that's going to give you 19%. I personally like to do 20% or more for fifth wheels. So I'm going to add 2% to this. So I just want you guys to have an idea why I got that number. So 22% is what I'm going to use. So let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers and the spreadsheet. So here's the spreadsheet. I recently got my GMC weight at a cat scale. And then I took my trailer back through the cat scale a second time to get the pin weight for it. But the numbers that you see here are for my actual setup. So with my family, including myself, and I do have a portable refrigerator and a generator in my bed. I do not use a fifth wheel hitch, so just keep that in mind. So all in, I'm at 842 pounds just in my truck. So if you take this number off of my payload that's on my door sticker, this is what I have left to tow a trailer. So with that being said, let's take the 2200 pound weight that you guys saw. As I've said in other videos, you cannot use online weights because if you're doing it that way, it's incorrect. As I mentioned, you're gonna have to add 21% but you have to keep in mind nobody goes camping like this this does not include propane this does not include batteries typically now sometimes it does include batteries because of the solar prep packages now but I would just venture to say add 2% to whatever you got online so we saw it was 19% we're going to use 21% and just for the sake of time I'm going to just use the GVWR so watch this so if you take 14,000 and multiply it by 21% you're gonna get 2,940 pounds. So basically, I have no more available payload if I were to tow at this number. Now keep in mind, you can relocate the spare tire to take some weight off the front, but in a lot of cases, if you are carrying teenagers, you might run out of payload a lot quicker. And keep in mind, my cargo is light. So I could take my generator and my uh, cooler out of the truck and put it into the RV but I might pick up you know, a couple hundred pounds there with those two things because my generator alone probably weighs 120 pounds and my cooler probably weighs right in around 80 to 90 pounds there too. But all in all, make sure you do these numbers. I strongly would recommend maybe looking at it dually for something like this because I would venture to say that people inside the truck are gonna be a little bit older, so they're gonna be a little bit heavier. But I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys soon.